Hello and welcome to another Sprues and Brews unboxing. I'm Matt and I'm joined by Jay and we're looking at the Tau Empire Army set, the Croot Hunting Pack. Now Jay, I think it's safe to say that you're a little bit excited about this one. Yeah, ever since we saw these, was it LVO these were revealed? So, yeah. yeah, they really got my sort of um, juices flowing. I'm really excited for these ones. Um, the, the, the all new sculpts as well, it's a reimagined Croot Warriors. Yeah, all sorts Crutox. in here. Crutox, Crut, Crut Rampages, Crutox Rampages, which are new, I think they're like young Crutox are more uh, vicious. Uh, two new characters, and then the usual gubbins in there, like the, um, the the Codex and the data sheet card. So really, really cool. So massive thanks to Games Rich for sending us an early review copy to have a look at on the site. What we're going to be doing in this video is having a look at the kits, seeing how they go together, see if there's any like optional builds or anything. And then in the second half of the video, we'll be going through the full codex, seeing what rules have changed, see what profiles are in there. More importantly, seeing what detachments are in there, because I'm pretty certain there'll be a crew one in there that we can have a play with. And then at the tail end of the video, hopefully we'll have some of these built up so we can see what they look like in the flesh with some size comparisons to other models in the range. But without further ado, should we crack this box Let's open, this. Jay? So yeah, I think um, your your love of the Crute has come fairly recently, hasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, I've got a massive Tau army, um, but I, I've never tended to use Crute in there. But I mean, I think it's just these new models, they're just so, um, I don't know, characterful. They are. Um, and it's, I think it's going to be, well, I'm hoping it's going to be quite a sort of a unique play style for them as well. Um, you know, they, they don't seem very heavily armoured. More sort of grill warfare tactics and quite a mobile looking army, hopefully. Yeah, I hope... I was going to say, this is a jam-packed box full of uh, sprues. It's hard to translate the weight of it, but it is a hefty box of sprues. And shout out to the cover art as well. Yeah. Very, very nice on there. It is nice. So where to start on this? I think what we'll do is we'll pull out some of the characters first and then start delving deeper into the box. So first up, we have got, I think this is the Croot War Shaper, maybe? This it's got is like a two, a, a sort of double-bladed crew rifle. Is that right? Yeah, he's got two like one-handed weapons. Oh, this could be the uh, flesh shaper. Then. Oh, the flesh Maybe. shaper. Yeah, he's a really, really nice kit. I yeah, like so, uh, uh, and, and it. This is a new right. character, isn't it? Flesh shaper. I don't think. This is a new sort of um, unit for the crew. Yeah, so I think they've um, they've basically invented quite a few new characters for this release, haven't they? And obviously we'll see more when we get into the uh, the codex in a little bit. But he looks really cool. So yeah, it looks like he's got sort of two melee weapons. Um, does he have like a rifle or a shotgun? The rifle slung over him. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. So that's that one. And then we've got the other new character too. This is the guy with the big rifle. So this is the Akrut War Shaper. He's a nice kid. Yeah. As well. So he looks like um, he he might be like your HQ or your your sort of leader. Uh, and I think I've seen he has. Um, so he's quite. He's got various weapon options. You yeah. Can so there's on. a bow. I don't know if that's on the box. So the bow is not on the box art. No. So he's, he's got also like got a sling a or something. A couple of different heads on him as well. That's really cool. Well, we'll see that in the, the assembly instructions in a bit. But that's a. That is a very very nice kit. I like him. So next up, I think we've got the Crutox. Uh, yeah. So Crutox were an old metal kit, weren't they? Back when the Tau originally came out, there was a lot of Crute kits that are now all in plastic, which is exciting. Yeah, with the Crute gun on the back. Yeah, so again, I don't know if there's a couple of different weapon options here, maybe. I think I have seen, yeah, there's like the, the traditional sort of larger Crute rifle, the Crute gun, but then there seems to be like a, um, almost like a grenade launcher looking yeah, weapon. Yeah, that's cool. It looks like we've got quite a few different head options too, because I imagine You'll probably want a few of these in your army as your heavies. Because look at it, if you took a pure crew army, you're probably lacking in the heavy weaponry department. So a few of these hopefully can fit the bill. I really like the um, like the uh, bangles and, and uh, wristbands and, and, and different like talismans and things hanging off of this model. Yeah, they are very, very nice. So that's the new crew tox. And while we're on the crew tox vibe, I think I can spy the uh, the new what they called crew tox hunters or right rampages. Uh, uh, crew tox rampages. Yeah, so three of these in the box. I think from a law point of view, they're juvenile Crutox that have been tamed, and um, I'm guessing they're quite angry. They don't look too much smaller than the one, the Crutox with the gun, though, really. No, I mean, the, the Crutox is a is a small, if we put a kind of comparison here, like a small single frame, so you've got, like, you know, twice the plastic, so they should be fairly sizable kits once they're built up. And these guys look like they're armed with pistols and melee weapons, the riders on top. 
It looks like some of them look like harpoons or javelins that they're carrying on the back as that well. That's cool. I, I really like these guys. I know a lot of people are disappointed that I forget what they were called, but Forge World did some uh, mounted crew Norlock. carriages. No, no, they were the big ones. Norlock riders they had, and then they had the smaller ones too. And I think people were disappointed they didn't bring them back, but I quite like that they've designed something kind of new here with its own identity. I really like the sort of dynamic posing on these models as well. Yeah, that's ace. So that is them. And then the rest of the kit is made up with um, 20, I think, uh, 20 crew carnivores. Crew carnivores, yeah. So, now I originally thought these were just going to be the same as the, the kill team, but it's actually a brand new kit. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is we've seen that they, they do this a lot now, Games Workshop, where they sort of reimagine an existing model. So, it, I think these won't look too... Um, bad against your sort of older crew models that you may have in your collection. Yeah. But certainly they're an upgrade. They're much more dynamically posed. You've got a variety of different weapons in here. Um, I think the leaders as well. I don't know if you've got the sprues there. Um, one's got like a telescope looking glass. Um, looks like they've got a variety of different special weapons. Um, and I think as well from a scale perspective, I mean, we'll see how they stack up against the. Um, uh, the far stalkers um, yeah more band um, and the older crew because i think they are a bit larger well like i say what we'll do at the end of the video we'll have hopefully some of these built and some of the older town models as well and see how they stack up but yeah really impressive 20 of them gives you a good kind of core to the army so that's all the plastic stuff in the box obviously we've got quite a bit of um paper stuff in them as well no this is new so this is very nice look how the codex is presented in here with its own little slip case oh wow that is new. I wonder if this is part of the drive. I know Games Workshop had a bit of a drive to reduce like single use plastic and it looks like they've done it here by rather than shrink wrapping it, give it its own nice like display case to put it in. That is very slick, isn't it? That is really nice, yeah. So in here, we will look at these now on camera because we're going to look at the profiles in the book. But it looks like you also get a nice little box here, if I can open it, with all the, uh, the data sheets in as well. Gotta say, this is a much better idea than, look at them. Having them available. Yeah, wrapped in cellophane. In cellophane, yeah. So obviously you get all of the war scrolls in here as well. Nice little blue edging on there yeah, too. It's nice. But you get all of them for the entire army, not just the ones that are in this box. So 135 quid this box costs. And I think those cost, what, about 20 pound each normally from Games yeah. Workshop, plus the price of the, um, the codex and all the models in there too. That is very nice. So obviously we're gonna have a look at the codex in a little bit. We'll have a quick look at the cover just because that is gorgeous. Don't know if you can see it on camera, but some nice metallic embossing on there too. That's like uh, some of the early limited editions in these boxes were not quite as nice, where I think these are every bit as nice as the standalone limited editions that you can buy. Like, you'd happily pay 40 quid for that fancy codex yeah. in the case. That's really so nice. we'll put that to one side for now. And what we're going to do is have a look at the instructions just to see if there's anything, um, you know, interesting with alternate builds, for example. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just blown away by that core box, to be honest. Yeah, that's impressive. Uh, so let's open this up and have a look what we've got. So um, most Games Workshop instructions, if you've not built any kits recently, have a really useful size guide. So you can just drop the base on and see which size it is. I really like that, especially when you've got like 25 mil and 28 mil bases and stuff, it sometimes gets a bit fiddly. Yeah. And then a full breakdown of what kit belongs to what. So looking at the shaper, it does look like we've got a few um, weapon options and a few different head options. I really like the one with the bow. Yeah, the war shaper with the bow, yeah. Now obviously, when normally I go for rule of core of whatever looks good. If you're a more competitive player, you might have read of the codex first and see kind of what the weapon options do. It does give you room though for picking up multiples of this box as well. Multiple war shapers, yeah. Yeah, especially if you're going to do like a pure crew to army because off the top of my head, I think if you've had everything from this box, plus the kits that are coming out in the next few weeks, or months maybe, by the time it comes out, I think it's about 900 points. So if you're a full 2,000 point army, you're gonna have duplicates of some of these units, but that's fine. It's gonna be a horde army, isn't it, Cruz? Um So yeah, he looks really, really cool. We've then got the Flesh Shaper, which has less modular options by the look of things. Um, 
and looks like it has only got the one head option on there too so that is less posable than I thought it was. The other guy though, there's, there's quite a difference between the stances yeah. of the two models. Different silhouettes there, yeah. So I really like that. And um, obviously we've got the crew carnivores and again I can spy a few different special weapons in there too. Yeah, I think some of them are holding like grenades as well, there's, there's like a shotgun looking weapon. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's actually a little crew hound that goes on the uh, the leaders as well. Just literally spotted him there, yeah. He is very cool. So yeah, a long quill is the champion. And then there's actually, what's nice, there's a, so normally the way these kits work is that each kind of like pose will build a certain body, but there's actually two different poses that build the squad leader. So you've got two different squads, they've got different stances, and that's a really, really nice touch, isn't it? Yeah. So again, this might be one where, normally I see this on like kill team reviews, but it might be one where you want to work out what you want to build across the two sprues. This one's a little bit easy because you get two of them in the box, so you probably are going to be able to build like every stance. But yeah, there's a lot of poses there. Uh, obviously got some of the special weapons, don't know what they do at the time of filming this part, but we'll be talking about those a little bit later. But it looks like there's a, you know, scope for having a couple of them in the squad. Now from a rules point of view, I don't know what you're allowed in them, but... Um, Certainly in 40k, there's no downside to... There's a bit to, more freedom nowadays. Yeah, there's no, there's no downside to not building them all because you're not paying the points for them, are you? So they're very cool. Krutox Rider does indeed have two weapon options on the top of it as well. So obviously you'll only be able to build one of them with this kit. We will report back if it is a bit more poseable. Looking at the sprues... The body... The, the, kind of the, the, the part with the guns and the body does actually look like it uses different parts there. Uh, play, yeah, see whether you can... Uh, yeah, I think all the parts that are used to build each variant use completely different parts. So what you could do is build the two upper torsos with the two guns, because you actually get two heads in the box as well, which makes it even easier, and then blue tackle, fit a small magnet on the torso. Yeah. That's a really nice touch. In the past, Games Workshop seemed to have shied away from making multi-builds easy because they want to sell more kits, but this one looks like it'd be very, very simple, even if you just drilled a hole and put a paper clip in, a paper clip, yeah. and then swap them out that way. I mean, there might be that there's one that's, you know, better than the other and you're just going to take it all the time anyway but it's nice to have the options. Does it have a different, um, so the actual um, Crutox itself, that's got a different head, two different head it's options? It's got two different head yeah, options, yeah. Because I mean that's right, so you can have a couple of these and make them look a little bit different. And you've got multiple head options for each each build by the look of things as well, with different fins on them, so yeah, if you had a unit of three of them they'd all look different, which is cool. Excellent. Uh, and then we've got the Crutox Rampages again, there's some variations in the head. I think the pose is the same on all of them, but again, if you had a squad of six of them, they're all going to look different. And again, a few yeah, different weapon options. They are quite dynamic models anyway, so it's probably not so much of a problem, is it? Like you say, if you do a few head swaps or something there. Yeah, so, and I've seen the box then, we've just got the uh, bases and the like. We'll go through those once we've built the models. But what we're going to do now is have a look at the new Tau Codex and see what has changed in this book. Okay, so uh, here we've got the new Tau Empire Codex. And this is, just before we start, this is the um, uh, special uh, edition cover that you get in the Crew Hunting Pack Army set. And I don't know if you can see very well on the camera, I think so. You've got this lovely blue embossing, uh, the Tau symbol and Tau Sep symbol there. Um, it's a really, really nice uh, sort of limited edition codex cover here. This is sort of sharing the artwork from the Crew Hunting Pack Army set. Um, but yeah, I really like this. And this blue embossing as well on the data card, it's all edged with this blue sort of metallic effect. A uh, really, really nice presentation overall for the, uh, for, the, for the army set, um, including that cardboard slip case that we looked at earlier. Um, so let's have a look straight into the codex then. Um, so of course we've got an extensive written article on the Spruce and Brews website where we go through all of this uh, codex. Um, but we'll just flip through the pages now and have a look. So like we see with most of the 10th edition codexes, we get a, a big section at the front here with all of the background and lore. Um, some nice artwork, quite a lot of this artwork we see before and they tend to reuse it through the codexes. Um, but it is nice to see again and you sort of realise how much uh, artwork and background has been built up for the for the Tower Empire over the years actually uh, considering these were um, a fairly young faction I remember when I first got into the to the game these were the the brand new kids on the block really 
Yeah, it's uh, Games Day 2001, was it, when they announced the towel? Yeah, and it was. Uh, I remember it was good with the with the uh, the old plastic battle suits and um, broadside units. Uh, they were a force to be reckoned with as well back in the day with their um, they had the longer range um, and strength five rifles, which was quite uh, quite a unique sort of trait for the uh, for the uh, for the factions back in the game back in that day. And you've got this lovely artwork. I love this new crew artwork with the new crew rampages. And we've got a few of the new crew characters and the new crew tucks there. Yeah, yeah. while this is a, a Tau Codex, it's safe to say, releases wise, the crew have certainly taken the uh, front page, haven't they? They have, yeah. They get a lot of love in this uh, in this Codex as well. I think they're going to be a really, really sort of interesting sub faction to use. And you know, you think into the future, will we see it expanded again? You know, we've got the Vespid in here and other auxiliaries mentioned, so. I mean, this, this does set a good precedent, doesn't it? Because a lot of armies have got decent plastic ranges now, and they're arguably the tower complete, because I don't think like a battle suit close combat unit would necessarily fit too well, would it? Where they've been able to take the, the crew stuff and expand it out with this and like you say in the future we could see, you know, more auxiliary races brought in maybe. Yeah, I think that's one of the sort of the um, draws of the Tau army and the Tau faction as a whole. Um, like you say, I think you're right. I mean, as much as I'd like to see a big robot with power blades and whatnot, I think it'd be much more interesting to see some sort of um, auxiliary faction brought in to cover that sort of weakness in the in the Tau army. Uh, then we come to the model showcase. Um, well, these are always really cool to see sort of armies set up like this. Um, we see a few of the new crew units here. Yeah, you've got a sizable Tau army, haven't you? So a lot of this uh, is in the same scheme, actually, isn't it? The white... Um... The Viola scheme, yeah. Here we have a showcase of the new crew. So, I mean, a lot of people have seen these on the Warhammer community website, but they are nice. And we've got a few of the models built up as well, which I'll have a look at shortly. Um, have you enjoyed building them? Because I know you built some of the, the kill team and really enjoyed doing them. Yeah, I did. I, I think they have so much character. Um, and actually I was surprised at the amount of um, options on the sprues as well. I mean, a a apart from the Flesh Shaper, the Flesh Shaper was pretty um, set in the way you built him. But even these guys, the Crutox uh, Rampages, th there were various options for the heads and equipment of the riders and different head options for the Crutox, which wasn't immediately apparent to me when we were looking at the sprues earlier, but having built them... Um, you know, you can make some very different looking Crutox Rampager models. And then that sort of customizability is sort of spread across the Crut Carnivore squad cool. and even the Crutox um, as well, the, with the, the gun on the back. Nice. So I guess what everyone wants to see though is the rules. So um, I guess start with Combat Patrol. Um, this is a new box, isn't it? With the, um, we haven't seen the Devilfish in one of these for a while. No, and I really like this box. I mean, I think the Combat Patrols generally are really really good i mean if you're starting out as a tau player this is a great selection of models to, to pick up and 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 also as reinforcements for an existing tau army so i i really like the um the sudden dawn cadre uh, combat patrol um you get a really nice sort of painting guide as well so say that's a good thing they've done with these new codexes for someone coming into the hobby this kind of battle ready scheme is really handy to turn that combat patrol into a force isn't it it is yeah and and actually you think okay it's only a small sort of combat patrol but you get quite a substantial set of rules to go with it as well um so the for the greater good ability here this is shared um with uh, the main tau army uh, it hasn't changed from the index so this is the sort of concept of uh, when you choose a unit to to, to shoot um you can choose it to be a a, a spotter sort of um, model for a unit and then uh, you choose a, another unit to benefit from that that's the guided unit and you get um bonuses to your ballistic skill um, you can also get some ignores cover ability as well if the unit that's doing the spotting has marker lights so i imagine you'd use units of pathfinders with their marker lights to spot a unit and then some fire warriors the strike team can benefit from that um, but there is to say it does have a negative as well so uh, if a guided unit attacks a unit that is not their spotted unit they suffer a penalty to okay. their ballistic skill and um, you get a couple of enhancements to use um uh, a, a couple of strate strategiums as well to, to use for your combat patrol um, and a, a choice of secondary objectives here um, which I think is really cool as well this gives you an introduction into the main game so it's not too much choice that you're spoilt by choice if you just get it into the game but you've got a bit of flexibility there yeah I think some people have watered down that combat patrol would be a heavily watered down version well I think it's safe to say it's more more basic than the core army rules as we look through the, um, the data sheet yeah it's still a good introduction into how the army plays and I think it does translate into the proper kind of army when you get that far it does yeah 
So here we get data uh, data sheets for data cards for the individual units in the uh, combat patrol there. Um, so yeah, so it's a nice little contained section there, the combat patrol, common to all the 10th edition codexes. Uh, and then we come to the main army um, rules here. So has there been much changes for the Tau then? Um, so no, there hasn't. There's been fairly minor changes across the um, across the data sheets themselves. Um, the weapons, as far as I can see, haven't changed at all. The weapons profiles, the drones remain the same. Um, the probably the most impactful change, and we talk about this a bit in the article as well, is the changes to the crisis battle suits themselves. Yeah. So, um, the, the, uh, I think a common sort of loadout that that we tended to see a lot of was their uh, triple um, cyclonic iron blasters. Uh, that's no longer an option at all on crisis battle suits, and we'll come to the data sheet shortly. Um, which I think is a good thing because it, it certainly overshadowed a lot of the other I options. I mean, when I played Tau, that was a one per army like prototype weapon, wasn't it? Oh yeah, now, back in the day, yeah. I guess people are just taking that as... That's one of the things with 10th edition. Because weapons aren't pointed, you may as well take the best option. And I think, as we'll see in a bit, one of the good things that they've done in this book is make different weapon loadouts into different units so then you can point them appropriately, can't you? That's it, yeah. I, I, and I do like what they've done with Crisis Battle Suits here. Um, so yeah, just sorry, just to point out there, just in case we missed it here. So the for the greater good ability here, exactly the same as it is in the index. So if you're familiar with the index, there's, there's no change here. And it's, it's, it's quite a simple, straightforward army rule. Uh, and really, um, uh, you, you want to be, um, uh, you know, units working together which is you know for the greater good really uh, I do like that quite thematic uh, we come to the the first of the four detachments in this book so the Kaoyon or Kaoyon uh, detachment this uh, returns from the index and for the most part it's identical there have been a, a few changes in the enhancements um, I can't recall now exactly which one it is I think it was the pure tide engram has been moved to a, a separate um, detachment um, but this this uh, this detachment is all about sort of setting yourself up for turns three onwards okay um, so a lot of the stratagems enhancements they sort of are geared towards playing that patient game uh, you want to be minimizing the casualties you're taking maybe um, not castling up but playing quite reserved or, or defensively in okay. the first couple of turns and then looking to pounce in the uh, towards the end of the game um, and to that end, I think you've got options in here to um, a lot of the, the um, uh, bonuses apply in those later rounds. So you'd be wanting to hold back your uh, your hard hitting units until those later rounds. Um, so yeah, so I, like I say, not too much of a change there from the from the detachment in the uh, in the index. Um, then we get the Mont Car detachment. Uh, so this is almost like um, a reverse of the Kalyan. Uh, so in here, your army is benefiting from a bunch of bonuses in the first couple of turns of the game rather than the last couple of turns in the game. Uh, specifically in the first, second and third battle round, um, all your ranged weapons in your army get the lethal hits ability. Oh, nice. um, and then when if your unit is guided, they're getting the assault ability as well. Um, so yeah, so this one you want to make a really aggressive start to the game and capitalize on that, put your opponent on the back foot straight away. And you know, you, you want to be winning the game really in those first three turns, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like this one. And I think as well with these two detachments, I, I, what I like about these is that they benefit all units in the in the towel list rather, okay. than, you know, apart from the crew. So um, you, you crew a called out specifically has not been able to take some of these enhancements and whatnot. Um, so I think using either of these two detachments, you're able to build quite a varied or balanced um, type of list. And I think that's where detachments are good, where it, you can fit it to your playstyle rather than having to, I guess, scope it to certain units. Now, certainly the later ones are, are very much around this is a detachment that favours certain units, where I guess these first two are more. I guess you can use all the toys in your uh, arsenal. Gun. Exactly, yeah, and it, it depends whether you want to play a, a more defensive game or a more aggressive game. You choose either of the two detachments. Uh, then we come to the first of the two sort of like you mentioned uh, more sort of specific detachments uh, where you, you would tend to want to build a specific kind of army and uh, this retaliation cadre is, is all about the battle suits really. Uh, so I can see Farsight leading this kind of detachment, lots of different battle suit units. Pretty much every rule on, on, on in this detachment, whether it's a stratagem enhancement or the detachment rule itself, benefits only the battlesuit units. 
Um, Bonded Hoya Rose is a really, really nice detachment rule. So it basically grants plus one strength um, and an additional armor penetration to all of your battle suit ranged attacks if they're within a certain distance. Uh, so I think it's 12, 12 inches for your plus one strength and then um, if, you're, if you're six inches in it, it's um, improving the armor penetration as, uh, as well. Now, obviously that will leave your battle suits vulnerable because the last thing really your battle suit wants to, to um, uh, find itself in it is close to an enemy ready to get charged next turn so you have to bear that in mind obviously um but you know you can really capitalize on those bonuses um there are some really really cool abilities here so for example the star flare ignition um system uh, this allows you to um remove a battle suit from the um, board and, and put it into strategic reserves at the end of your opponent's nice. turn so you can get it into position do some damage and then, and then get it out of there and redeploy it somewhere else on the, on the battlefield which is uh, I really really like. I've got to say this is one that appeals to me I've always fancied doing it what was far was it the eight his seven seven yeah the eight off. yeah and I think with this uh, detachment you can probably do something really cool themed around that yeah um, and I think as well in here there are different stratagems that help you deal with. So, for example, the yeah, the Arakan protocol here. This is a good stratagem to use if you find yourself um, outnumbered, you know, by hordes of enemies. Uh, this is a good stratagem to deploy, which can sort of help you deal with those kind of units. Uh, the failsafe detonator is a good one for inflicting mortal wounds when your battle suits are destroyed. So, you know, you just detonate themselves. Um, I think there was um, a really cool one. Yes, this shortened blade one. This is really, really interesting. So this one allows you to deep strike a unit in within three inches of an wow, enemy okay. model. Um, which again, okay, you'll get it in close there. You're probably vulnerable, but of course at three inches, both of your bonded heroes abilities are kicking in, which is great. You can also use the failsafe detonator if it all goes wrong. <laughs> um, and I mean, that can catch a few people off guard as well. It's hard to screen three inches off, off of yeah, your unit yeah. there. So. Um, so yeah, I do like the retaliation cadre, and yeah, I, I think thematically an army of, uh, of crisis battle suits and, and uh, riptides and things like that yeah. is going to look really, really nice. Um, Gundam heavy uh, army. Yeah, and I mean that's it, it, it's a signature sort of style of the Tau, isn't it? The battle suits. There's a big draw to the army, I think. Uh, then we come to the crew hunting pack uh, detachment. And this is also really, really cool. So uh, just, to, just to point out, you know, you, you can use this detachment and include Tau units in it. Um, but I think really uh, you want to be playing crew only with this detachment. All of the sort of stratagems, enhancements and, and rules and whatnot just, just interact with the crew keyword. Which coincidentally is the contents of this box as well. <laughs> so people might have a good start on uh, putting this together. Yeah. Um, uh, one cool thing about this detachment is it does let you take crew carnivore units as battle line to help you build that kind of crew only army which is nice you need it because they're relatively cheap i think they worked out that you're talking like a thousand points for all of the new crew releases together so you're going to need quite a few duplicate units i think you will yeah um and and there is a cool um recite unit recycling mechanic in this detachment as well so you can bring on the um, units of uh, crew carnivores that have been destroyed i think uh, i can't quite recall which uh Stratagem it is. Uh, there's one of one of these somewhere that she uh, recycle them. Uh, there we go. Yes, there we go. You can add a new unit to your army here. The join the hunt one, um, but it doesn't bring back characters unfortunately. But there you go. Um, they've got some really really cool detachment rules. Uh, so crew really want to work together, um, and and you can see this in this hunter's instinct where they add one. Um, sorry. Not necessarily this one, but there are other ones here. But this one, you get one to the hit roll if you're attacking a unit that's uh, below starting strength. And then you get one to the wound roll as well if that um, target is below half strength. So you can weaken an, uh, a target unit with some of your other units. And then go in for the kill with your sort of um, hard hitter and benefiting from plus one to hit, plus one to wound. I think that's really, really nice. Um, crew don't wear much armor. They're not that tough. Um, the crew tucks are the exception really. They're quite tough with a lot of wounds, but generally you're, you're quite a, um, uh, 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 you know, you're not, you're, you're certainly not death wing knights or, or terminators. Um, but actually they are deceptively resilient. So all of your crew benefit from a six plus invulnerable save in melee and a five plus invulnerable save against range okay. attacks, which I don't think is too bad. Especially when you've essentially got a horde army as well. Uh, that's, that's exactly it. A third of the shots are bouncing off you. Um, so I do think that's that, that that's quite, you know, really, really good. Um, and 
What I found when we get through to the data sheets you'll see as well is the crew are a super, super early aggressive army. They can deploy right up the board. Okay. They've got Scout 7 across all of their data sheets. Um, they've got um, assault uh, guns. They can they can be contesting objectives and charging units certainly in turn one, which will put an opponent on the back foot. Uh, and of course, if you're that far up the board, you're limiting firing lanes, you're engaging units in close combat from turn one potentially. So you're not actually taking that much return fire. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that's a it's a very unique sort of playstyle. I think. Well, that's cool. That I guess differentiates them from the traditional tower army. Well, let's have a look at the the, the data sheets then. Is that you say on the <laughs> Of the, the whole, there's not many changes. I think we, we've talked a bit about the battle suits, and they've been shifted into multiple different uh, sheets now, haven't they? Yeah, they have. So, so I mean, and I go through all of the changes in the article. So, you know, that'd be the best place to, to check out those details. There's certain things you can see here. Farsight has a two plus save now rather than a three plus save, but generally the changes across the data sheets have been fairly minor. Um, you can see here we've already lost a commander in crisis uh, battle suit, so we've got these two commander options now. So I think the the other crisis clan has gone to legends, but generally there's not too many differences here. Um, the only thing really to point out is the cyclonic iron blaster. Now is, is you can't take it in freeze on these suits, which um, is just something to to be aware of. Um, and you'll see, you know, we've lost a few characters, so you've got the Ethereal here, but there's no on she or on Var anymore. Um, strike teams, generally the same, but I just want to call out this Suppression Volley ability because I really like it. So in your shooting phase, after this unit has shot, select one enemy infantry unit hit by one or more of those attacks. Until the start of your next turn, while this unit is on the battlefield, that enemy unit is suppressed. While the unit is suppressed, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, subtract one from the hit roll. I mean, I, I just think that's such a awesome ability. You can have a couple of these strike teams just he's sort of crippling enemy devastator squads, um, thunder king, you know, units that want to be shooting. I really, really like that ability. That's cool. Um, uh, let me come to the, the crisis battle suits themselves here. So you can see they've been split into three uh, different data sheets. Uh, we've got the Sunforge, which is the um, equipped with two fusion blasters. Um, and that's one thing to point out actually here that every every crisis unit can only have two weapons equipped now, not not three. Uh, you know what? Aesthetically, I think they look better with the two. It always looked a bit odd with an extra gun on the shoulder, didn't it? it I think so. Yeah. So so these are obviously for for, for certain purposes. This the Sunforge battle suit is your your monster and vehicle killer, and you can see the Sunforge ability here gives it uh, rerolls of wound and rerolls of damage when you target in those units. Um, you've got the fire knife battle suits here which are armed with missile pods and plasma rifles and you can double up these weapons so you can go two missile pods if you like or two plasma rifles these are your sort of anti-infantry anti-elite infantry units here um, and they have this uh, fire knife ability which um, lets them reroll hit rolls of one um, but if they're targeting a unit that is at starting strength you can reroll the entire hit roll as well so you can already start to see some of the synergies with other units in the book. And that's nice well. that they've given the different loadouts different roles now, rather than just you're not just paying the points for the different weapon loadout. That has got a specific purpose within your army as well. Yeah. Um, and then finally, you've got the Star Scythe battle suits there, which are equipped with burst cannons and a flamer, or you can double up on each of those weapons as well if you like. Uh, and it has a Star Scythe ability here, which is um, I think it. it, it so here's each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack um, that doesn't target a monster or a vehicle, you can improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. Um, yeah, so I really like it. I mean, another change here as well, I think that's worth pointing out, is that they can only be taking units of three. Um, and I think I think you could take larger units in the index. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, another advantage here of the free data sheets as well is that you're, you know, in in uh, army composition where you can take uh, free of a certain data sheet, you've got yeah. options here to take more. So the crisis battle suits. There's not really many other changes worth discussing with regards to the rest of the data sheets. Just one or two small changes across them. And like I say, if you go to the article, you'll see all the details there. Uh, then we come to the 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 crew units so there's quite a few uh crew data sheets now uh we've got the 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 new characters the trail shaper the war shaper and the flesh shaper here have they all got different kind of roles then within the army they do yeah so your trail shaper is more like your general kind of um, model 
uh, sorry, the War Shaper. Uh, he gives you your CP efficiencies and, and, and battle shock um, aura effects and that kind of thing. So he's going to be a useful one to include. Um, your Trail Shaper is um, a really, really cool sort of um, a force multiplier for your um, crew carnivore uh, units. So we've got the trail finding once per turn when an enemy unit uh, ends a normal advance or fallback move in nine inch of this model's unit. If this model's unit is not in engagement range, it can make a normal move up to D6. Oh, that's cool. So sh even more ability. Creep onto objectives, get out of range, all sorts of shenanigans you can do with that. Yeah, uh, and then crew ambush. After both players have deployed their uh, armies and determined who has the first turn, you can redeploy this model's unit and one other friendly crew unit. And when doing so, any of these units can be placed into strategic reserves, regardless of however many other units you've got in strategic reserve. So you really play mind games with the opponent from the get-go with these uh, sort cool. of um, units. And then we've got the Flesh Shaper, who I believe um, he gives a five plus feel no pain, or six plus feel pain increased to five plus to a unit he's attached to. Now you say you've already got those invulnerable saves and stuff. Yeah. Big blocks, can you take the carnivores in 20s? You can take them in units of 20s, and if you take them in units of 20s, you can add two characters to them oh, instead right. of one. Okay. Uh, so you can double up on a Flesh Shaper and a Trail Shaper, for oh, example. Nice. Um, so yeah, so these are really cool. I think I think you probably want one of these in your army and, and multiples of these guys. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the Crute Lone Spear, who is also a good force multiplying unit. So again, you can see here I didn't mention that the Stealth um, Scout Seven across the across all of the abilities uh, data sheets. Uh, we've got infiltrators on these ones um, and stealth as well. So really, really cool. They're quite nippy then with those kind of start a game movement. They are. They they remind me. Um, of Gene Steel Cults, really, in that yeah. regard. Uh, very similar sort of uh, play style, I think, to Gene Steel Cults. Um, this one's a really, really cool one as well. So obviously he's got some really nice weapon profiles here. So he's got a strength 10 uh, range weapon, only 18 inches, but I don't think range is gonna be an issue for these guys. Um, but he also has some good sort of force multiplying effects down here as well, and synergies here. So advanced scouting, each time this model makes a ranged attack that hits an enemy unit until the end of the turn, each time another crew model from your army makes an attack, that targets that enemy unit, you can re-roll the hit roll. Oh nice, so he's essentially your uh, marker light, I guess, for the rest of the crew. For the crew, yeah. Um, we've got the crew carnivores themselves. They're relatively similar to how they used to be. They get a couple of different weapon options now, but I think the strength here of these guys, they can take them in units of 20 and you can add um, two war shapers to the unit, you know, uh, which I think is really, really cool. Um, field craft is a nice ability as well. At the end of your command fade, if this unit is in range of an objective marker you control, that objective marker remains under your control. So you've got that sticky objective type ability. And again, you're going to be able to afford, well, you can have multiple squads of 20 of these. They're not spending many points really. Yeah. Even with the attached characters. Yeah. Which is nice. Crutox riders, I think, are brilliant. So these are a lot tougher than they used to be uh, in, the, in the index. Um, they've got some nice weapons. Um, you don't get a lot of AP in the crew faction, so we've got AP 1 here, uh, but you get a lot of attacks. Um, but I really like the crew pack mates ability, so once per turn in your opponent's shooting phase, when a friendly crew infantry unit within 6 inches of this unit is selected as a target of an attack, one unit from your army with this ability can use it. If it does, after that enemy unit has finished making its attack, that unit with this ability can shoot as if it was your shooting phase. Nice. So they can basically return and fire against So them. you have a couple of these, I guess you max out three units of these scattered through your lines. Wherever gets shot at, they're gonna be able to return fire. Yeah. Um, the Crutox Rampage is really, really nice kit. So these are your sort of line breakers. Um, they've got some really, really uh, nice abilities across their melee weapons. So lance, extra attacks, devastating hits. They've got the scout seven ability as well. So they're deploying way up the board, movement seven. Um, and they've got this crew line breakers um, ability. So um, basically they, they, they're able to do mortal wounds when they finish a, um, a, a charge move. Okay. And I think if they destroy a unit, um, all of the units around them have to take battle shot tests. So if they charge in and finish a unit off with mortal wounds, they can flip battle shot before they start fighting. Oh, that's really so, good. Yeah, I like that. And then you've got the crew hounds as well. Um, these guys are good, I think. I think you would use these guys to range ahead of your army, uh, engage in those units that you don't want to be taking overwatch or, or firepower from where the rest of your army catches up. Um, and their abilities sort of um, allow you to do that. So overall, I think you've got you know eight Eight data sheets there. You can make a pretty, pretty cool-looking crew army. 
Um, Are you going to go lean into a, a full crew army then? Um, I, I think I'm going to, I'm trying to get, uh, I think a thousand points of crew. I quite like the idea of using the crew alongside some Tau, tau forces for that. Um, I think what's lacking there is your heavy strength and kind of destroying vehicles and stuff. Maybe. Yeah, you, you, I mean, I think, I think the strongest gun you've got is strength 10, which is on, on the javelin here. Um, but I actually think the way the crew will play is you can probably avoid vehicles, ignore vehicles uh, and, and play around them. You've certainly got the mobility to outmaneuver them. Um, and then we got the fast stalkers who who they remain the same as they were in the, so it's actually nine data sheets actually for a crew army. Nice. Um, and then we just have the rest of the uh, the tau units, and again, not really any change here. So yeah, minimal changes on the um, majority of the... Which is yeah. what we were sort of hoping for with the index, really. Well, we've seen a lot of that in 10th edition. There's been some, like, I think the, the stuff that's got, gone wrong a little bit has been tweaked, but on the whole, most of these have been pretty similar to the indexes, haven't they? Yeah, which is sort of how they were sold, wasn't it, back at the uh, beginning of the edition. And then finally we've got the Crusade section of the rules, and I'll be completely honest, I haven't had a good look through these bits yet. So in the previous um, Tau Codex, it was all about sort of um, building up a network of, of planets and, and colonising these planets and getting bonuses, and it looks like it's very similar here as well. Um, what I do like to see though is there's quite a few pages here dedicated to Crusade, so I'm really looking forward to sort of getting my teeth into yeah. this section. Uh, we really like the Crusade content. Yeah, we'll we follow up with another Crusade video maybe in the future yeah awesome so so yeah that's that's a look at the codex i guess before we close out the video though should we have a look at some of the new models okay so i have been able to build up a selection of the new crew models from the army set uh, and let's take a look on them now so we start with the war shaper who is your sort of leader character um I mean, it's just sort of so dynamic and interesting sort of model here. Lots of character. Um, this model actually is quite customizable. So you get a variety of different weapon options and accessories that you can attach and different heads as well. So I've bought him, uh, built him here without the bow. I was very tempted to build him with the bow. Uh, I think I'll get another one with the bow. Um, so yeah, he's on like a rock here, basically sort of standing on. Uh, and the, the crew models themselves are fairly large. You know, they're, they're, they're sort of equivalent, maybe a tad bit taller than a space marine. I say, they're, they're certainly bulked out a bit, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, you get various sort of shoulder pad options as well. Um, and the amount of detail, so like this little gun here, he's got a gun on his back behind his cloak as well. There's little grenades and you'll see in a minute on some of the crew carnivores, they've got like bits of meat they can hang off them and, <laughs> and different things like this. So this guy here is the uh, flesh shaper. Uh, so this one wasn't as custom. Uh, oh no, sorry, that's not. That's a, that's a uh, long quilt. This is the flesh shaper. Sorry. Um, so yeah, so this one, only one way to really build this. Not not many options really. I mean, you could swap the head, but I don't think you'd want to. If you look, he has a much larger sort of like quill off the back, mm. which I think is really really interesting. Um, he's got a, a cleaver and another blade and then a gun strapped to his back. You've got a bit of meat there hanging off his uh, belt. Um, and he's got a really, really sort of aggressive pose where he's lurching forward. See, it's odd that there's not more customization on this one because this is one of the units that's probably going to be multiples of this character. Yeah. In the army. Yeah. Um, we'll look at the crew carnivores themselves here. So this is your um, long quill, I think they call them, which is like your unit sergeant. Um, you can build, I think, three different versions of this guy oh, nice. from from the from the different sprues. Uh, this one here, I've built with a crew carbine, which is a new type of weapon, um, and he has a nice little crew puppy on his base. I do like that. That's cool. Which doesn't have any effect in the rules, but it does look quite nice. Um, and yeah, this kit in particular is really really customizable. You can build, you know, sixty crew warriors, and they'll all look very very different. Yeah, on first glance, I thought this was going to be using the kill team frame, but obviously that's an entirely different unit isn't it this is a brand new kit yeah and lots and lots of options on it then yeah so this one here just with a regular crew rifle um you can see there he's got some things hanging off his belt an ammo pack and uh is that a i think it's a meal in a pack maybe um yeah and and they are yeah we can't really it's a shame we haven't brought a space marine to put them next to but they are quite large um and then Finally, what we've got here is one of the new crew carnivores with one of the special weapons. 
Um, so he's launching it's like a, almost like a little grenade launcher here, uh, running forward. And like I say, when you're building them, uh, you can mix and match this particular pose with various different weapons and different heads uh, to get a really sort of um, different looking uh, unit. But yeah, really, really dynamic looking models. Yeah, they look cool. Uh, then we come on to the big one. So if we start with the Crutox Rider. Um, this is a really, really fun kit to build. Uh, you've got lots of options with this one. So straight away you can build it with different heads. Uh, and then uh, what I can't show here, but what, what actually you can do. So the, the legs here are one section, but then the gun, the whole gun and torso, arms and head is a separate component, a module that you build. So you could easily build that. And I've used a little bit of blue tack or, or magnet on the waist. To, to swap it round if you wanted to. Yeah, uh, something they've been doing a lot of more recent GW kits, because I think a lot of the old ones kind of like penalised you and made it difficult to swap out the weapons. But I think there's definitely been a shift, you know, certainly in a lot of the heresy stuff, it's very easy to make it modular. This is the first kit like this that I think we've seen where, you know, it's, it's not just the weapon that's different, it's the whole upper torso, so like you say, you can just swap it out. Yeah, and then I've built as well one of the Crutox Rampages. Um, so initially when we were looking through the sprues it didn't look like there were many options on this kit but that was quite deceptive there is so you get various heads for the for the three different crutox rampages that you can build um, and then also the rides are on top here you can build them in different ways as well so um, this this particular one you could build with a pistol um, there was a holster you could attach to it with, with the pistol missing uh, a different head that you could swap around uh, he's got these javelins on the back here but I really really like the sort of uh, the posing of this one he's just lumbering forward this massive beast it's only attached here there's like a joint on the ankle that attaches it to the, the lower foot that you have to just be a bit careful of because there's quite a lot of weight relatively speaking at the top of this model just on this tiny little um, um, uh, section here it may be possible to pin it and actually thinking back now that probably would have been a good idea um, but other than that I do like it I mean it does look like the poor crew on top is just hanging on for dear life <laughs> having a great time really swinging this big cleave around so yeah that's, that's a look at the contents of the what's it, the Crute Hunter box Crute, hunt, Crute Hunting Pack Crute yeah. Hunting Pack yeah so that's the army box and I guess launch box for the new uh, Tau Codex so uh, w w is it, you're a Tau player Jay you've been looking forward to all the Tau is this something I've sort of been sent one is this something you'd like to kind of pick up or is this one that you could potentially get d duplicates of and be able to use to make an army I think this is one of those rare army sets where yes i think picking up duplicates of it is a, is a good shout you know you, you're going to need those crew carnivals if you're building the crew hunting pack detachment um you can take crew touch riders in multiple in units of three um and the crew touch rampage as well you can um obviously i, I think you can take a unit of six of those um, and then the two characters that you get in the box as well I, I, certainly the flesh shape is going to be um valuable to be sprinkling through your different crew units so i do think this is a really really good set to pick up and i i, I think this lovely limited edition cover of this Tau Codex as well is really really nice and of course you can always um, uh, you know sell sell your second copy if required um, you get about 500 points I think of crew models in, in, in the set so two boxes gets you to that thousand point yeah. mark I think and then obviously the, the second wave of stuff's probably another 500 points or so yeah so yeah, it's well again. If you've enjoyed this, um, Jay's done a full write up over on sprucesandbrews.com. Going into more depth on the changes and, and the Crusade uh, section will be on there as well. Um, if you do enjoy the video, please give us a follow as well. We do lots of unboxings and videos like this. We want to get some more battle reports and painting videos up very soon as well. So uh, make sure you check that out. If you do want to support the site as well, we have got a link to Element Games in the description. If you use that, we get a bit of a kickback, which helps support the site and goes towards funding stuff like this. But yeah, until next time, I hope you uh, are planning your Tau army. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.